So with the state of Missouri, what we really did was a few years ago take a look, was to take a look at the problem that we were again running into, that uh, we really didn't have a recruiting strategy in the state. And uh, we didn't have a consolidation, really, of our uh, recruiting efforts. When you look at state government, you're really a number of different companies, you might say, all under one umbrella. And in just the last few years, we've done a consolidation of our most of our IT departments and brought them together so now that we can leverage uh, our resources and be able to do more outreach as well in terms of what we can offer as technology careers. So Paul and I began working on this uh, back in just, just about three years ago. And uh, we formed a committee which uh, took uh, representation from many of the agencies that were interested in being involved in that. And we said our mission and strategy was, you know, again, to be able to bring uh, qualified applicants to the state of Missouri to encourage many of the students to go into the IT careers and also to partner with uh, those other IT employers in our local area to try to increase the number of qualified professionals in the Jefferson City area. We recruited volunteers to, from our agencies and basically assigned teams to many of the schools uh, that we have in our local area. Doing that outreach, being able to get out there and talk to the students and, and to about considering IT careers. Now, some of our early activities, too, is we really set up that, uh, that recruitment effort, that outreach to the job fairs. Um, one of the big things that was really something different in this country and, and we have gotten some recognition for is what's called the Jefferson City Information Technology Coalition. And we formed this coalition originally back in the late 90s, but we have become very active with it as well, that we have 12 post-secondary institutions here in the Jefferson City area, and many of our local uh, IT employers, as well as the Chamber of Commerce. And we uh, have worked together to be able to do outreach to the youth to be able to consider IT careers. We uh, do a uh, summer camp called Computer Professions on Demand, CPOD for short, to be able to uh, work with 20 students and, and five mentors, and again, with the idea of trying to interest those students in information technology careers. Uh, Paul and I, too, over the last couple of years, have worked with NASIO, and that's the National Association of St State Chief Information Officers. And they have also, too, this, this problem is just not in Missouri, it's really nationally, and even internationally. But the uh, national organization has worked with many of the other state governments, because we're all uh, struggling with this issue. And uh, we've worked on uh, a, a um, uh, information, a booklet to be able to help them with best practices and everything, to give them an idea as well of what they can be doing, what are some of the best practices some other states have used to be able to uh, work with this area. And we've established a new entry-level hiring process. Many states and uh, even the federal government, you have basically what in the state we call our merit system. And uh, we have been able to do for the, uh, what we call the information uh, computer information technologist trainee through our uh, computer information technologist three area to be able to reach outside of the merit system to have people apply directly to the organization looking for the job and uh, be able to look at resumes hire the right person at the job for the job at that time and not have that lengthy process that we've had in the previous uh, time with the merit system so we feel very very lucky that we've been uh, able to do that outreach and get that attention for uh, information technology in missouri state government one of the other areas that we saw a real need for was to create a website that would uh, allow all of the agencies, whether you were in a non-consolidated agency or not, to be able to post your jobs online as if you would uh, with Career Builder or some other type of uh, online application. And we know that you know many people are are 
on the internet, that's where they're looking for the jobs. They're not necessarily looking in the newspapers anymore. And so a website was created here, and what you see up on the screen is our IT Careers website. And we have basically kind of a self-service, if you will. The agencies can go in and on their own and post their positions. Uh, the information is there for where the uh, job applicant can send their resume. And basically, uh, this is a one-stop shop. It gives information about living here in mid-Missouri, about working for state government. Uh, we have our link to Second Life out there as well as Facebook and everything that we do uh, in the um, uh, Web 2.0 world, we're trying to interconnect. So uh, you know, you'll be aware that we have one place on Second Life or Facebook or I even the website there. And the next one you'll see is our Facebook site. And again, this is just to have a presence. Uh, there are so many uh, young folks out there that are now on Facebook. And really, we went in this direction trying to reach uh, not only that millennial, but everyone now that is so linked in, if you will, pardon the pun. Uh, but anyhow, with that, we decided that we needed to do a little bit more outreach and out into that virtual world. And this was something very, very new for us. And with that, wow. I'd like to introduce Paul Wright and to talk with you um, about, you know, how what we did uh, out in that area. And Paul, take it away. Thanks, Jan. I hope everybody can hear me out there. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all as well, uh, as Jan did before. Um, we wanted to give you a little bit of background of, of kind of why we went in the direction that we did to the use of Second Life and, and some of the other uh, Web 2.0 types of tools. So I think Jan's given you a, a probably a pretty good perspective of, of where we started and, and kind of where we are now. I'm going to go touch a little bit more on the actual Second Life uh, piece that we've actually established, and we'll show some uh, pictures of that here in just a moment. But uh, just a little bit more uh, on, on the background piece. As you can see here, what we tried to do along with the web page that we had and the, uh, the Facebook and, and some of the other things is to try to make a determination if there was any place else that we needed to be to find the demographics of the people we were trying to hire. So those who were in their 20 to 30 age range, they're uh, technically skilled and, and that sort of thing. And ran across some articles about this uh, virtual environment called a, uh, a Second Life. And did a little more investigation into that uh, to see what it was all about, uh, how you would get into it, uh, the pluses and minuses and that sort of thing and made a determination that this might be something that we might want to kind of stick our toe in the water and, and kind of see how it works out. So we, uh, we did uh, some searching around, found a plot of land, and uh, set up shop basically within uh, a couple of months or so and, uh, and went in and started doing some, uh, some recruiting. And what we found out, just as kind of a general summary before I get into more detail, is that uh, you know, it was very little cost for us to, to kind of be out here. It's costing us about $130 or so a year to maintain the plot of land that we're on, plus uh, being in the search and, and some other things that we do, uploading and, and downloading of, of JPEGs and, and other types of things, too. So very low cost for us. Uh, and we're also able to talk to not only students out here locally, as we would uh, if we went to uh, one of the college job fairs, but we're able to talk to uh, students and, and professionals uh, across the U.S. and actually across the world. And again, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that here in, uh, in just a moment. 